Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy and today we're going to do another watercolor journal um, idea and someone had asked um, several weeks ago we painted this one where I showed you several different types of basic entry-level flowers that you could do um, and someone asked how do you put these flowers in a pleasing composition so I thought it'd be great to revisit these now we've done several other pages and put them into a little bouquet all right so let's get to a new page uh, we'll do this side okay let me clip you down um, so we want to do and actually I'm going to do it vertically this way there we go so i'm going to zoom out just a little bit there so you can see the whole page all right so the first thing i do um, with planning out a composition i do often use a pencil sometimes often sometimes um, but just to map out the basic shapes so um, when I'm thinking about it and which flowers I'm going to use, I start with my biggest flowers first and then I fill in the smaller ones around it. So the bigger flowers would be the, um, of that series would be the cone flowers. So I try to keep it balanced. So maybe I'll do a cone flower up here and then maybe one down here kind of facing in the other direction. So one facing this way, one facing this way, and just, you could put like a little dot in for the centers. Again, I don't get very detailed. I'm just trying to figure out, I'll draw this a little darker just so you can see it. And then we have the white flower, the, um, the petally flower that we do. So, and that's kind of this shape. So I would put like one of those up here I don't want it to be too heavy, so maybe I put one of those up there and like a smaller one kind of in this area overlapping. So I'm gonna put it behind the cone flower. But then I have this big space in the middle. Um, I'm gonna put another cone flower in here overlapping, okay? So now I have this big kind of rounded bouquet of these flowers, but I also want to add in, what did we have in there? Lavender. So that is going to be taller. We're going to put that right here um, and maybe one kind of poking out right here. And as you're painting, it doesn't mean this composition can't change um, as you go. And then I also have some rosebuds. So those are little flowers and kind of balance them on either side. I like to work in three in odd numbers when you can for smaller elements, but not all the time. Like I'll do two, three, three, just trying not to make everything the same. Um, and then I would do my stems down here and then I would use those other elements, maybe another lavender kind of poking out here, but I'll paint this and kind of see how it's going. So let's get started painting. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually do our really light, um, the white kind of flowers there that we did wet on wet uh, with the soft petals because I can overlap them easily and they are kind of tucked in here and I can overlap them with the pink once they dry. So for those we did, I don't remember the exact combination I did in that video, but we did a very subtle color. So I'm going to use... Um, my diralide yellow and a little magenta to make like this peachy color but really watered down and I'm going to add just a little bit of I think cerulean to it I'm going to give it more of a gray a warm gray color I think a little more yellow okay so with these I'm gonna first start by painting my water is a little dirty so you can see it but that's okay these kind of three petals in water and I'm gonna paint right over the pencil lines here I'm not gonna worry about it because again these are gonna be covered up 
And then I'm going to introduce this color to the bottom. And my book has a little bit of a tilt downward, so I don't want that to work against me. So I'm just going to lift it up a little bit. And then I'm going to do this one up here, big soft petal. And again, these I'm not worried about painting over the things that are going to overlap it, the pencil lines where I put them, because these are so light and delicate that they're just going to you're going to be able to overlap them pretty easily with those stronger colors. I'm going to put a slightly stronger color right at the base. And give these kind of like an orangey feel. Otherwise I feel like they're going to be really overpowered. So I give them a little bit of a stronger color at the bottom. And then I'm also going to introduce, um, some green while these are still wet these I do have to do the green while it's still wet I don't have to do the whole stem but at least so sap green and at least the base of it because these look so much better when the green can really integrate all right so those are my first two. We're going to have to let these dry completely before we start to build in the other ones. Okay, so let those dry and we'll come back to start with our cold flowers. All right, we're back and these are all dry and we are going to jump right into the cone flowers. So I forgot to tell you I'm using a round Princeton Aqua Elite brush today, size eight and core paints as usual. I'm going to pull out some of this beautiful magenta. I also have a transparent petal orange I'm going to use for my center. You could just make it with a yellow and magenta if you don't have an orange. Actually, I also have some quadrocrone gold. Uh, and yeah, that's what I'm going to start with at first. So with my orange, I'm going to paint in my little gumdrop center here and another one right here and this one will be a little more rounded it'll be like tilted towards us This one got a little out of control, but that's okay. I'm going to make it work. It's a little big, so I'm going to have to make my petals even bigger. All right, I'm going to start with my magenta. Now you can do these in layers. I'm going to do these in one pass, I think. I'm going to go dark and not do a lot of layering for the sake of time of this video. So I'm just using the shape of my brush basically to make the shape of the petals. So starting in the center on the tip, pressing down and coming away. And you can make yours like perfect and pristine or a little funky. These flowers get pretty jagged at the ends. So you can play into that or you can make them like perfect little. And then towards the back here, they're all foreshortened. So they're kind of folding away from you and you only see a little bit. You don't see the whole shape. I really want to turn my page here. <laughs> and my centers are not completely dry. I probably would have waited a little bit longer. All right, so that's my first one. And then I'm gonna take quadrocrone and a little Payne's Gray to make this dark color. I'm just gonna drop a little bit of this around the center 
and I paint these flowers all kinds of different ways. This is just one way. Um, and I'm going to let that dry. We're going to put in the black little fine hairs um, in just a little bit. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Got to go back to my magenta. Let's make a magenta over here. And this one we're going to do last. Um, probably should have done it first and have this one overlap, but this one is going to overlap this one though. So here, so we're going to go right from the center down. And then as they progressively get work their way around, they bend in that direction. Oh, my puppy's barking at someone. And then again, these in the back are just going to be barely visible there. Okay. All right. We're going to let that one do its thing. I'm going to lighten this up. I fill this one in. It's going to be smaller. And I'm going to let it tuck behind. So I'm kind of just going up to there we go. Uh, maybe one more like right here. Beautiful. And we can fill in those little bits with some greenery and things like that. So now we have like our big flowers. So let's focus on adding in. And I'm trying to remember if I'm getting all of the flowers. Let me see. Oh, we have thistle in there too, rosebuds and thistle. So let's add, we're going purple. So magenta, and I'm gonna pick up ultramarine, make a beautiful purple. All right, so thistle, I forgot to add into the composition, but we can add that in right now. But let's do, um, yeah, let's do some of that lavender. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember what we actually did. So that's going to be up here. We're going to start with just these little buds, leaving space in between. Right down to the edge here. Okay. And we can do another one over here, but end it like right at where this flower begins. Mm, those are kind of doing the same thing, which I don't love, like the same direction. So let me put maybe another one popping out over here. And picking up some sap green. And we're going to run that through the center. Give them a little stem and connect them. They are going to run together. Try to find the spaces in between. Okay. So let's do, and we can definitely add some more of this, I think. Well, I'm going to add a thistle. Let's add a thistle first. So more ultramarine. I want these to be bluer. And we're going to get way up on the tip of our brush. Um, so these are the ones. They start at the top. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. My hand isn't covering it too much. And... They're like clover shaped. There we go. Just choo choo choo. Just like that. 
and we'll do one kind of facing downward this way so opposite we do have to get that green in there facing downward there I'm gonna tuck one up here I know I have rosebuds planned for up here but I will scooch them in around I think this will be good to break up some of the pink because the rosebuds are going to be pink as well and maybe a second one over here kind of tucked behind a little bit all right let's get some sap green out and connect a few things this one in there I am gonna start to create some stems want this green a little wider here all right it's looking good so far Let's go in and add in some of those rosebuds. So these are the really light, light pink ones. And we're going to do this wet on wet. So clean water on my brush. Put in our little bud shapes. So if you haven't watched the other video and you're like, I'm moving a little too fast for you on how to make these things, go watch that one first. We'll see if I can link it. But if you're keeping up and following along, then that's great. Again, these are really simple flowers. They shouldn't take more than one or two, three steps. All right. Sap green to the rescue. Go. Just gonna throw in some greenery in some other areas. Okay, uh, connect to this one. So let's just get into some leaves, and we'll finish these centers for our cone flowers. So I'm just gonna use sap green and make some different shaped leaves. Some really big ones. So these are all together. You can't really tell which stems are connected to who. So that's okay. And you can change up your greens by adding a little blue to make up some darker greens. Add in some little loose leaves. Look at how easy those are. Don't overthink it. Flick, flick, flick. Leaves, beautiful. You can put some kind of coming out above. Oh, this blue-green combo I have going on. I basically just dipped my brush in sap green and phthalo blue, but didn't mix them together, and it looks so good. I wouldn't be able to replicate it if I tried. All right, so let's finish up with just um, some more details in here on our, I'm gonna switch to a liner brush if I have one, lay it around. So this is a fine liner, long, long hairs at the end. And I'm gonna take some Payne's Gray and some of this orange, make a really dark orange and go around and add these little fine hairs that are gonna create a lot of contrast. And 
And you can definitely go a little slower and get more detailed with these, but add on multiple layers. Hope I'm not putting my hand in anything wet. I probably am. Definitely in some lavender that's still a little wet. Whoops. All right, I'm trying really hard to not <laughs> touch any more of the page, but still hold my hand steady. And some people don't like this step on these, like for this particular way to paint them. And they would prefer just to have like a wet on wet kind of brown to lighter orange center. They don't like all the texture and that's fine. You could also go back in and add a little. So I just picked up some Quadacrone Magenta on the center to add some darker details. I'm trying to keep these simple for you without too many steps. All right, so this is basically how I start to build compositions. Start with the biggest flowers, uh, work my way down into smaller, medium, and detailed flowers, figure out what I'm gonna paint first, what's the lightest, what can be overlapped, um, and go from there. And then I, the other th advice I would give you is don't be afraid to add to or change your composition as you're going. Uh, so if something just doesn't seem off from your, or seem right from your original plan and it seems off, go ahead and change it. Um, as you're as you're working. I mean some things you can't change in terms of once you've put something down you can't erase it but if you're halfway through take a break stop and like reassess the balance the overall look and feel of things and say like oh I really need something more on the other side and there's nothing planned there um, or you want to change the color it's too you know weighted in a heavy color this side or that side Go ahead and make that call and say like, yep, I'm going to move this flower over here instead that or add an additional one that makes more sense. So there is your um, simple watercolor flowers and leaves uh, with a composition, a little bouquet around them. So thanks for watching. I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to like uh, this video, subscribe to the channel, share with a friend, check out the description for links to supplies and materials that I use and happy painting y'all. I'll see you for the next one.